Big news from Microsoft today as they've just announced the Microsoft 5.4 release on Hugging Face. We're going to be testing it out today so that you can get free access. I'll be showing you exactly how to use it plus some of the key benchmarks so you can actually get access to it directly on Hugging Face as you can see right here. And if you're wondering, okay, how does it perform? It's kind of a reasoning model, a little bit like, for example, GPT. So you can see 5.4 over here versus 5.3, which is the previous model from Microsoft. Then you've got Quen, GPT-4.0, Llama, Quen 2.5, and GPT-4.0, right? Now you can see that, for example, in the benchmarks here, it's winning on science and also on maths. And this is completely free to access. You can see the model summary here. So they said 5.4 is a state-of-the-art open model built upon a blend of synthetic data sets, data filtered from public domain websites, and academic books. One of the main use cases for this is reasoning and logic. And you can see a summary of this. So 5.4 offers high quality results at a small size. This is available to run on Olama as well, which means that you can run it locally and it is an open source model. So if you want to start using it, you can get access via any chat. So for example, on huggingface.com, you can select your model right here. And all of these models are actually free. So for example, you can select Flexity, Mistral, Grok, Llama, Quen, but the main one we're going to focus on today is 5.4 and we'll test it and see how it performs. Additionally, what you can also do is run it locally. For example, you can get it locally via GitHub, but we're going to focus on any chat for now because it would just be easier to test and install. So the first problem that I'm going to try is I will say create an SEO cost calculate website brand colors equals, and we'll see if you can just create a basic website straight off the bat. Now, one thing you're going to notice is it's super slow when it's replying, right? It might estimate like 17 seconds, but actually it tends to be more like 20 or 30 seconds. It does depend where it's being hosted and I'm sure it depends. And, and also like probably how many people are using it and that sort of thing, because we're accessing it via any chat. But that's just something to be aware of. It's, it's not that fast when I've tested it out. Now, if we actually get the response, you can see that it's defined the scope of the project, but it's not actually built it. So I'm going to say now, create the HTML, CSS, and JS, and we'll see how that performs. So you can see down here, for example, it estimated 16 seconds, but that's already running well beyond that. So let's take the HTML and the CSS and then plug it into Live Weave to preview it. And we have the website ready to go. It does work first time around, which is great. Now let's see how it performs for actual content creation. So I'm just gonna give it a basic prompt that I would give to something like Claude, for example. I'm gonna say, create an SEO optimized article for this. What is SEO for content creation? Do this. Easy to read, UK grammar, FAQs, headers, keyword in the first and last line, keep it real, first person, etc. And we'll hit enter and then see how that performs. Honestly, one of the things that I would say is it's definitely not going to replace any no code token. Just going back to the prompt whilst we're waiting for this to be done, when I look at the first prompt and the outputs, I'm like, I'm not going to use that. It's not going to replace, for example, something like DeepSeek, which tends to reply faster. Also, the API is pretty much free because it's so cheap. And additionally, the design outputs that you get from something like DeepSeek or Bold.new or any of these other tools tends to be a lot better. So for actually coding websites, it's okay. It does the job. It doesn't do anything special. So just something to bear in mind there. Now let's check out for content creation. So what's bothering you about SEO? I don't really like that as a title, I'll be honest with you. So it's not outperforming Claude when it comes to writing content. Let's just read the actual content itself. So so it says, you're probably wondering what on earth is SEO and do I really need it? It's a fair question. You're not alone in feeling a bit lost, with tech, especially with all the tech jargon floating around. So let's break it down. Not bad at all, to be fair. Like the content itself is not bad. It's a little bit generic, if I'm honest with you, but I've definitely seen worse, right? The content itself is not bad. It's not going to replace Claude. If we actually put the same content prompt through Claude, we'll test that side by side and just see how it performs, which I would say is probably the gold standard of writing content. So let's plug that in and see how it performs side by side versus Microsoft. So we've got the outputs from Claude over here and then the outputs from 5.4 over here. Bear in mind, this update was released quite a long time ago. So if we look at the headings, for example, the heading is much better. What is SEO? A no nonsense guide to ranking in 2025. The content itself just feels a lot more humanized. It's better formatted. It reads more humanized. Like it's far and beyond a better model versus 5.4 is not going to replace writing or code in for me anytime soon from what I can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the prompt that says humanize this so it bypasses AI detectors 100% of the time must be 100% non AI detectable, right? So if we grab that content that we previously got from 5.4 and also what you're going to notice is the content itself, the previous output actually cut off halfway through. So it's cut off in that sentence where it says you start by finding keywords like, and then it's just cut off. 
But if we take this content and then we're going to go to zero GPT and just see how it performs before we humanize it, right? So if you look at this, it comes out at 76% generated for AI, right? Now, so basically it's very obvious that the content is AI generated and any sort of AI detection tool and therefore probably Google can figure out that it's AI detectable. So now what we're going to do is with asset to make it 100% humanized. You can see again, the content has been cut off down here. So again, this is not ideal for writing content. Honestly, like I just use Claude at this point, but I know people out there want me to test it out. So we're going to now run this through zero GPT. The previous content performed at 76%. Let's see how it performs after we run the humanizing content through 5.4. So let's plug that in, hit detect text, see how it performs. And it's gone down to 60%, right? So it's dropped by 16%, but honestly, it's not done that great. Now, if we actually run that through something like ChatGPT's version of reasoning models, which is 01 mini. So we can use a very similar model from ChatGPT and see how that performs versus 5.4. And from here, we're going to use exactly the same prompt, which is humanize this so it bypasses AI detectors, must be 100% non-AI detectable. We'll hit enter and just see how that performs and whether we can get better output and a better score directly from GPT-01. Actually, what's interesting is GPT-01 refuses to answer me. So I'm gonna to switch to 01 instead of 01 mini and that seems to actually be doing it, right? So what's interesting about this is 01 mini will not humanize my content, but 01 itself will, which is basically the bigger version of 01 mini. So we'll grab that content now, we'll plug that into zero GPT and see how that performs. And that goes all the way down to 35%. It's not perfect, but you can see here that with a few tweaks, we could easily get that down to 0% AI detectable. So far, honestly, it's not performing as well as I hoped. It's not performing as well as the hype makes it out to perform, right? So for example, number one, for coding, it's okay. It can build websites, but they just don't look very good versus say something like Bold Up. For writing content, Claude is actually much, much better and much more humanized. For humanizing content so that it bypasses AI detectors, I would still use the main version of ChatGPT01 because that seems to do a better job. Or I would use one of the free humanizer tools that I've got inside my free course, link in the comments and description. Let's try this one. So we're gonna say now, create a one-page website for this niche, video SEO ranking service, brand colors equals, must be a beautiful sleek design, keyword equals video ranking service, source context, blah, blah, blah. And we'll go back to 5.4, plug this in, and we'll see how that performs. So let's hit enter. Honestly, at this point, like from what I can see, 5.4 does everything in a mediocre way, right? So it doesn't seem to be the best at anything, but it does seem to get reasonable outputs each time I test it. But the problem here as well is even though it's free, it's quite slow, which means that I wouldn't use it that much. For example, if I went over to DeepSeek and asked to do exactly the same thing and we plug that in, it's going to give me an output straight off the bat. Look at that. Straight into the HTML. It's building out ASAP. Now, if we go back to the output from 5.4 now, we'll grab the HTML. We're going to run that through Live Weave. So we've got the CSS and the HTML over here. And you can see the output here. So it's just really average right that's a pretty ugly landing page not great i can't build a website off that if you want to see what it should look like here's an example from bold.new or you can use bold diy as well you can host bold diy locally and then get a much better output and you can see what the website should actually look like versus the outputs from 5.4 let's have a look what deep seek managed to do with the same prompt so it's actually just given us one output html which makes it easier to get it set up and installed we're going to plug that in over here and look at that. Look at the difference. Like this is the output from DeepSeek. So I literally just copied and pasted the HTML from DeepSeek directly into LiveWeave. And you can see that just looks like 10 times better versus the previous version that Microsoft's 5.4 gave us. And let's just check that link works and sends traffic directly to our funnels. It does. So you get a good feel for this. It's okay for coding, pretty mediocre for Front end design, 5.4 is pretty mediocre. I don't know whether it's because I'm using it directly through Hugging Face, but it just doesn't seem that impressive to me. And then for content writing, it's okay, but Claude is beating it. And for humanization, it's okay, but honestly, ChatGPT01 is still beating it. We've run it through its paces today. And honestly, I probably wouldn't switch to using it for now. I know it's been a bit of a brutal review, but you know me, I don't like to BS and I'm open to testing 5.4 and new updates in the future. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get 200 chat GPT AI SEO prompts, plus some real case studies and examples, including all the prompts that I've mentioned today, feel free to get that link in the comments description. 
And if you want to get a free one-to-one -one SEO strategy session, feel free to put that in. We'll show you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 business month, generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales on this free link building acceleration session. You'll get a free SEO domination plan, discover the secrets of SEO link building. We'll answer any questions you have one-to-one. -one. You'll learn the best link building strategy for your website, plus how to quickly outrank your competitors for link building and how to turn SEO traffic based on what's working for us. Feel free to book that in. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.